Well, God bless you and welcome to Real People, Real Voices. I'm your host, James Jackson. And I'm your co-host, Pastor Wayne Moore. Well, it's always good to host with you. It is. It is. Happy to be back with you, my friend. Yeah. And uh, we've got a great show lined up for today. Yes, we do. We have two powerhouses coming in. Yeah. Uh, you would say good things come in small packages with uh, Dr. Green and uh, then you would say about Brother Hudson, he's a mighty, mighty good man. <laughs> Yeah, and both of these guys uh, are on the front lines for mental health. Yes, yes. Uh, th these young men have worked in a collaboration with you and myself uh, to make mental health uh, aware in, in the community and have done an outstanding job uh, in doing so. So today we're going to hear from them uh, as we hear from one another right. on the work that we've done in the last four or five months. And that's a, a big issue in this country and in the city of Indianapolis. Um, where mental health is concerned, uh, is my understanding that as much as 80% or more of the people who are incarcerated in Marion County Jail have some untreated mental health issue. Yes, those, those who are in the uh, Marion County Jail, uh, Marion County Jail has been utilized in, in the past uh, few years as our new mental health hospital. And so now uh, uh, we need to uh, address the issue uh, from all angles to try to do something uh, to eradicate uh, 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 the problem of serving mental health properly. Yeah, and the information I think we're going to share today. Yes. And people can, you can go to our uh, YouTube channel on WHMB TV 40, and we have some mental health information. We have some clips there that are very, very informational. Healthy you know, City. Yeah, and Dr. Healthy uh, Mind, Healthy City. Dr. Uh, Virginia Kane was involved uh, in that? Uh, yes, she's very much involved in it. She's, uh, she's a trooper for mental health, not only mental health, but for whatever uh, ails our community. She's right there to help us try to get it done. Yeah, so we want you to stay tuned with us right here on WHMB Channel 40. Check out the show on Sundays at 6.30 right. and on Wednesday nights at 11 o'clock p.m. You can watch this show. If you miss this one or you miss any others, uh, you can go to the YouTube channel the WHMB TV 40 YouTube channel, and you can watch this show and any other show that you might have missed. So we want you to stay tuned. Also, we want you to enjoy the musical selection coming from Sharon Bunny Moore. I love the name. We'll be back after that. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous can run into it and be saved. That's why we can call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Your name has the power to heal and set free. Oh, Jesus, oh, how I love your name. I love the name. I love the name. Yeah, I love the name of Jesus. Your name has the power to heal and set free. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, how I love your name. Great is the name. How great thou art, oh God. Great is the name of Jesus. Your name has the power to heal and set free. Oh, Jesus. Oh, how I love your name. Come on and help me lift up the name. Lift up your name, lift up the name of Jesus. Your name has the power to heal and set free. Jesus, oh, how I love your name. Worship the name. Oh, we worship you in the beauty of holiness. Oh, Jesus. 
Your name has the power to heal and set free. Oh, Jesus, oh, how I love your name. I love the name. I love the name. I love the name of Jesus. Your name has the power to heal and set free. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I love, I love, I love the name of Jesus. Yeah, I love to call your name. Oh, because I found so much peace in your name. I love, I love, I love the name of Jesus. Glorious is the name of Jesus. throne and call your name because I can find mercy and grace in the name of Jesus I love him I love I love I love to call your name because yeah, I can find peace in your name oh Jesus I call on you even in the midnight hour I can call on Jesus Hey, yeah. there's peace and joy in your name. You're a shelter for me. I love the name of Jesus. Yeah, salvation is in the name of Jesus. Demons tremble at the name, at the name of Jesus. Nothing can stay the same if you call on Jesus. Hey. Try Jesus, Jesus, call on, call on the name of Jesus. Yeah, 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 Jesus. I love your precious name. You're righteous, you're holy, you're awesome, you're incredible, you're marvelous, you're wonderful. Oh, Jesus. Welcome back to Real People, Real Voices. I'm James Jackson, your I'm host. Pastor Wayne Moore. And we've got some great guests with us today, Dr. David Green. Good Thanks be for being here. Thanks for being here, Dr. Good Green. Good to be here with you. Yes, sir. And Pastor Brian Hudson. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Dr. I can't Moore. reach down that far. Bless you, sir. Yeah, good to see you. Thank you. Let's get right into it. Uh, mental health. And you all, so of course, we've been talking about it for the past several months. Right. Um, Dr. Hutt, uh, Pastor Hudson produced some extraordinary videos right. uh, with regard to mental health. Big issue in this country. Yeah. Uh, your thoughts? Huge issue in our city when we look at uh, what's going on across our communities uh, in the state of Indiana, specifically in Marion County. We have a huge mental illness issue that's not being addressed. There is limited resources, and we have to do a better job with. Uh, many of our mental people suffering from mental illness end up in incarcerated and that's not a place for our mentally ill people we should be a people of compassion we shouldn't want that and so with the loss of facilities what we're seeing in our community is many people are suffering from mental illness our family members are either put away somewhere secluded sometimes they're in apartment complexes just kind of buried other times they're in jail because we're refusing to come out and really address the issue. That's why I'm excited about being able to talk about this on today, because we need to be aware of what's going on and help inform the people that, uh, and, and drive some changes in our community. Yeah, and, and uh, what you said about talking about it. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, one of my aunties, uh, she had developed some mental health issues, and uh, she was the one nobody really wanted to talk about, and, Sometimes uh, some of my other cousins would tease her. And f of course, people in the streets, there was a lot of things that she was doing that I didn't understand at the time. I was just a kid. But uh, it affects the entire family. But uh, 
notwithstanding, families don't want to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, I think for some of us, our culture or climate is uh, with something we don't know what to do with, mm -hmm. is bury it, don't talk about it, pretend like it doesn't exist. And so th some of these people are, are, are being pushed or swept underneath the rug in terms of conversation. And we need to really address the issue. We'll never uh, fix a problem unless we're willing to talk about a problem. And that's part of the solution. So we got to begin to communicate and talk about uh, and drive changes in terms of resources and, and commanding resources for uh, people that are in need. We should be concerned about the disenfranchise of our community and mental illness is an illness, and that's, yeah. what, that's the way we need to see it. We don't, we don't hide conversations about cancer and other diseases, heart disease, et cetera. We cannot continue to hide conversation about mental illness. And uh, Pastor Hudson, you produce some wonderful videos that are available on Facebook, uh, available on YouTube. On the one hand, you were able to find a lot of information in, uh, that helps you put this together. Uh, that's good, but maybe not so good that there's so much going on with mental illness in, in our country and in our city. Well, that's why we produced the video series and have taken an initiative uh, begun by you and Dr. Green and Dr. Moore called Healthy Mind, Healthy City. And we, we sat and talked about that. And the information, yes, it's daunting to think about, but the solutions are also available. The stats say one in five people have a mental health issue. Stats also say that for African Americans, it ticks up. We're a little bit more affected by the issue. But also the stats say that early intervention brings results in 80% cure. Mm -hmm. So that we have no choice. Put the information out there, remove the stigma, uh, encourage one another to have discussions, as Pastor uh, Green just said. And let's encourage one another uh, that with God's help, with good professional help, uh, these are surmountable problems. So I encourage our viewers to visit uh, HealthyMindHealthyCity.org. All the videos are there. We produce the videos. They're 10 minutes each. Also, they can be downloaded from the website and shown to your families, shown to your churches. We have DVD available. Uh, so we really want to make uh, our community aware Yes, it's a problem, but there's also a solution. Yeah, that's great. You know what, Pastor Jackson, also, Dr. Green and Dr. Hudson, 50% um, of police action shootings involve mental health patients. That is a national average right now. And uh, we need to be able to help people understand uh, those family members who have uh, people with mental health issues uh, that there is help uh, uh, for their uh, loved ones uh, as it relates to uh, mental health. And now uh, uh, our police department uh, has a division now that is working. It's, it's not really where it needs to be, but it's working to address those issues. So, for instance, if somebody uh, uh, has a mental uh, issue going on in their home, uh, we have a police uh, that will bring a, uh, a mental health uh, authority with them uh, to be able to help them with that particular situation so the issue are, will, will not escalate to where there is a, a, another shooting. And so th that's something that, that, that we need to really look at. Uh, this is across the country, mm -hmm. just not in Indianapolis, but it's across the country. Our police forces are not equipped to handle mental illness in our communities. And we talked about, uh, of course, both uh, Dr. Green and, and Pastor Hudson talked about the uh, resources. Right. Exactly. Um, do, do you think that more are coming available, or are we still a long way from where we need to be? We're a long way from where we need to be, but at least there's beginning to be a little more funding and push for facilities. For example, uh, there where Community East is on the east side, there's going to be a mental health facility. It's going to be built. Again, you know, it's going to take a year or two to build it. Uh, you know, if you talk to the experts, it's still not big enough. It's not going to address all the needs of our community. Uh, and there's several places that we need additional people that are permanently going to be mentally, where are we going to house them? This is just a hospital. And so what do you do with someone who's suffering from mental illness, who's on medication, 
and uh, probably can't function on their own, where do they live? What does that look like in our community? Because we don't want to continue to uh, have them staying in the Marion County Jail right. and being a part of that system. Um, the reality is, you know, some family members feel like they don't have any other choice. But, but let them, you know, even if they get out of jail, they're going to let them commit a crime or something where they go back in jail and they stay there because that's where they get their medication at. Uh, so those items need to be addressed. They have not been addressed. And so we need that from state down. Government, you know, we need everybody working together to address this need. So we want you to stay tuned right here on Real People, Real Voices. We have a lot more to talk about with regard to having a healthy mind. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Real People, Real Voices, and uh, we're talking about mental health. I want to get right back into that. Right into it. Uh, Dr. Moore, uh, and I want to, uh, uh, Pastor Hudson and Dr. Green to kind of weigh in on this. Are we headed back towards a central state uh, hospital um, paradigm? Of course. Uh, I would hope we're not headed towards a central state paradigm because uh, central state no longer exists. Uh, we want to be able to see a major high-tech, I do, uh, mental health facility that with, with a massive inpatient facility that will give adequate treatment and programming to mental health patients. We do need, in Indianapolis, Indiana, a major mental health hospital. Uh, these 72-hour um, stays, uh, for some reason, uh, at the community and other places, uh, is just not doing it. Um, there needs to be uh, more counseling. There needs to be a facility where people uh, could understand if they get off their medication what the recourse of that would be. Uh, um, that's where we are right now. And uh, for us to constantly talk about mental health and, and not put ourselves in a position to put our legislatures in a position to, to legislate uh, uh, proper resources for that would be a travesty to the community. Mm. Uh, we always talk about uh, the resources that we have for rainy day funds and all of that. Well, it's raining. It's raining, it's raining right raining. now, brother. It's definitely raining. It's definitely raining right now, and uh, people are losing lives, and families are becoming more fragmented mm -hmm. uh, because of this. But the stigma, we have to break down the stigma. Dr. Green? Oh, I agree with uh, Dr. Moore. I mean, we have to address the stigma. We're going to have to bring resources to it, and we're going to have to advocate for those who cannot advocate for themselves. So it's important that we share our concerns with uh, everyone that's in leadership uh, so that they understand this is something we really want to put our tax dollars, our resources behind here as the great Hoosier state. Mm -hmm. We want to make a difference. We cannot just abandon those people who are suffering from mental illness. You know, Pastor Hudson, is, we know that um, Mayor Hawk said uh, he, he introduced his criminal justice reform plan. Uh, there's a lot of focus on uh, more jail beds. In your opinion, is this also an opportunity to kind of address what Dr. Moore has said? Well, let's, let's just go ahead and expand that yes. to include facilities to deal with the problem. I've been reading the plan, and the plan calls for an assessment center. It calls for treatment. We'll hope that happens, but to your point, we need a facility dedicated to helping people. My concern would be, first, of course, properly funding it, properly staffing it, mm -hmm. having proper expertise. Central State broke down because of a lack of expertise, lack of proper staffing, abuse occurred. Uh, I agree, we need to have uh, a comprehensive approach. So the mayor's plan does have that promise. I'm concerned about the lack of input on the part of us on the front line mm -hmm. as to the process uh, by which it happened. But before the facility, we can still do a lot mm. through our families, through our churches. For example, we can identify, at least know the signs of mental health, five signs, easy signs, personality change, uh, agitation, withdrawal, poor self-care, hopelessness. We can look for the signs because mental illness began small and it grows and becomes big. We make the mistake, I believe, of not recognizing early signs 
Now we're talking about the extreme edge cases, which need treatment. Well, let's start before we get to the extreme stage. And so both from the church, from our churches, our homes, our families, into institutionalized solutions, it is comprehensive. And I hope the mayor's plan will address that. Yeah, well, maybe we'll get an yeah. opportunity to hear from yeah, him. Yeah, maybe we'll get an opportunity to hear from him as it relates to that. But I, what I like about the fact the Baptist Ministers Alliance and the concerned clergy and the Far East Side group has uh, taken it to the streets. We have yes. literally taken it to the streets. We're doing workshops in, in, in communities. We have professional uh, people who are uh, in the healthcare uh, industry talking to people. We were able uh, in the last four or five months to help some communities immensely. Uh, and that's what we have to do. Uh, the church has, we have to come out of our four walls mm -hmm. and get out there and make sure the people understand what's going on. Uh, but uh, we need resources to even do that. Uh, uh, society in which we live in is resource driven. Right. We will not be able to fix a problem without resources. Right. Yes. Well, and talking about resources, uh, recently Senator Jim Merritt, uh, he's very concerned about the heroin e epidemic. Mm -hmm. And as reported by the Indianapolis Star, uh, he is going to, or is in the process of creating legislation, in his words, to kill heroin. Now, because heroin now, Pastor Jackson, is a mental health issue. When my mama and my daddy were growing up, it was not a mental health issue. It was a criminal issue. Right. Now it is a mental health issue. And so now they want to eradicate it. But when it was in certain communities, it wasn't a problem. But now it has expanded itself and has been relabeled as a mental health issue. And so I hope he can eradicate that. But at the same time, surely if we can put a referendum on the ballot for uh, transit, surely we can put a referendum on the ballot for a hospital. And that's what caught my attention, uh, that if that's something that uh, someone who's involved in statecraft, right. someone who's in, uh, involved at that level can be as passionate, right. then there should be other senators and representatives to say, hey, there's a problem with mental health that's really uh, impacting uh, the black community particularly. So let's kill that. Right. Let, let's, let's sponsor legislation so that there will not be a uh, shortage of, re of resources. Right. And while great. we're doing it, don't forget about those that's already been impacted. Right. I mean, we don't want to, you know, fix their, here's the one that's right here right now, but what about those who are incarcerated because of this problem or this illness? We need to make sure that they don't get left out. Fall between the cracks. Don't, yes. I'd yeah. be concerned always whenever a public servant would highlight one area. Right. When it's a comprehensive problem. Mm -hmm. Right. We have to address this whole issue holistically from our various expertise points of view. But certainly killing heroin, okay, sounds good. But we know there's an underlying issue exactly. to heroin addiction. Let's, let's talk about the issue. Which circles back around to the uh, mental health piece. Right. Exactly. It comes right back to it. Exactly. And it's in every state. Every state is, 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 is fighting the mental health issue. Every state. And it just so happens, uh, within the last four months, it became very pertinent in our community because of the church. Yeah, and Pastor Hudson, if you can give the uh, viewing audience the location that they can find that information. In. Yes, go to healthymindhealthycity.org. There's a web page there produced by uh, these brothers and these pastors who love the city. You'll find the videos there. You'll find resource links. If you need help, you'll find phone numbers, other links to websites to help you. We want you uh, to be aware. We want you to be informed, to uh, help one another. If one in five people have an issue, that means those who are watching us uh, and someone in this room <laughs> may have an issue. Well, there's four of us. So I think we're safe here. Yeah, we're safe here. we got to find the fifth one. <laughs> thanks for coming. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Hudson. <laughs> thank you. And thank you. We'll see you next time on Real People, Real Voices. God bless you.